Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Power Book 4 for Season 1, Episode 8. This was probably one of the darker, more inevitable episodes of the season. We, we were bound to get to this point eventually, right? Yeah, for sure. I think that it's, you know, brought some new stuff to light. I think there's a pretty good mystery that's going on right now. There's lots of spoilers ahead, so let's buckle up, guys. <laughs> All right, well, before we get into anything here, just a quick little note. One of our microphones broke this morning, so if the sound sounds a little bit different, that is what's going on. I apologize for any sort of sound-related inconvenience there. We will figure it out. Yeah, we will, so just bear with us, guys. <laughs> All right, hit that subscribe button as well. We have more coverage of Force coming every week, plus Killing Eve. This is us, The Blacklist. A lot of good stuff happening here at the channel. And also follow us over on Instagram at Matt and Jess TV. Um, for those of you who have been giving us well wishes, our dog went in for surgery on Wednesday and we've been doing updates on how she's been doing. She's doing pretty good, but yeah. we've got that going on over at our Instagram channel. All right, so I, I think this is starting off point here is the biggest death we have obviously had on Force so far, and I'm assuming that she's dead. Gloria is gone. Yeah, she was shot in the face, so yeah. I, I think gone, <laughs> yes. Um, I've got a theory here, guys, so okay. let me know if you think this is just too wild, but... I know that there's some people that think that the Serbs are behind this hit. I actually think Polly is behind this, so b bear with okay, me, guys. Right. Okay, so this is where I'm thinking with it. So we saw this conversation with Walter and Polly where Polly was kind of like, listen, like... Everything that is going on with Vic and Gloria, it's something that you can't really stop. You can't really get them apart. You know, it's, it is what it is for where we're all standing. Walter ends up telling Polly, you know what, about the girlfriend, drop the hit on her. So we know that there was something that was planned. Polly reassures him, you know what, I actually didn't put it through at all. And Walter's like, good man, you knew that I'd come around kind of thing. Okay, that's one. Okay. So there's already a hit that's out there. Polly has told him, no problem. I never put it through anyways. Sure. And then we had this whole scene where, you know, Walter brought in Tommy and was like, hey, I want to give you a job. And Tommy's like, ah, no, I'm good. Thanks. Pass. So we later saw Tommy go over to Vic's place and be like, listen, you and Gloria, you guys need to get out of town. Here is a key for a car. It is completely untraceable. No GPS, no nothing. Get in this car and go. I've got you covered. Vic's kind of like, uh, I don't know if I can trust you. I don't really know you that well. Okay, but still, he's considering it. Then Uncle Polly shows up and he's like... Hey, Vic, just so you know, your dad sat down with Tommy and offered him a job and left out the fact that Tommy said, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I don't want to be part of anything that you've got going on. Goodbye. That was left out, I feel, very purposefully because then it was followed up with Polly giving this kind of speech and pat on the back like, Listen, I am dedicated to your family, to the Flynn's, you know, first before the family, the, the mob family. I am dedicated to you guys and keeping you guys together. Yeah. Getting rid of Gloria makes that happen. It forces Vic's hand where he has to stay with the family because there's no reason to leave anymore. I truly think that Polly is behind this and he did this to keep the family together because his dedication is to the family and keeping everyone together. So there's the theory. Let me know. I think it's right. Like I, I will say that from the get-go because it feels too convenient that it is the Serbian mob and it's just them all over again and that they are the only players who are solely responsible for this just because it just so happens to be right when Vic and Gloria are heading out and leaving, and we've already seen the Serbian mob go after Vic already. Like, to sort of have the same sort of situation again so soon feels a little bit repetitive. I mean, is this a really big risk? 
for Polly to take if he is behind all this? Sure, because it does feel like a one stray bullet in the wrong direction, and oh no, Vic is now dead, but I guess at the same time, if Vic is leaving town and he's not going to be a part of the family anyway, maybe you're just okay with that potential risk being there. The fact that Vic ended up sort of remembering in his mind that he can't really trust Tommy because of what Polly said, and he takes the car with the GPS. Yeah. Polly is able to track the GPS, and I'm not saying that the Serbian mob can't, yeah. but I feel like it's just there's too much smoke around this. The other, I think, thing that's important is that Polly got to where he is in Walter's sort of organization for a reason, and we haven't really seen that much of a reason we you know he seems to be a well-spoken enough guy he seems to be a loyal enough guy but what i think if we were all to sort of pose the question of like okay what makes polly as a character special like other than his accent it's like is there anything else that makes him stand out like this this sort of plotting and <laughs> scheming like this sort of justifies him being where he is on the show they have spent too much time on Polly for Polly not to be behind this. That's just what this feels like. We know that he's got a, a, a rough relationship with his own son, and it feels like he's basically adopted the Flynn family as his own. Okay, here's here's the thing with Polly, though. I, I, I feel like I've seen enough mob-related movies over the years, and I don't even really love this particular genre, but I feel like I've still seen enough of it to sort of know where this could end with Polly, and this is the really big risk with this. If Walter Flynn finds out exactly every single thing that he did, you know, Walter likes to be in the know of everything. He wants to have utmost <laughs> control. It doesn't mean he's good at it, but he clearly wants it. And so if P Walter finds out that Polly did all this and Polly risked his son's life, I think this could be very, very bad for Polly down the road. I'm laughing because Walter doesn't know anything. He didn't know that his son was dating Gloria for years. Yeah. He's only now found out. He couldn't figure out what is going on with his daughter? He had to actually sit down with her and be like, just tell me what's going on. Don't you know I have eyes and ears everywhere? And she called out to be like, well, then why can't you figure it out? Like, and it's true. He just like, for this big criminal mastermind, he knows nothing. He has no real eyes and ears in the city. It feels almost like his just his empire and the, the network that he had it is not as strong as it used to be and i know we kind of know that because he's stuck in his ways and he won't move into anything else but whoever are he doesn't even know where his guys are that were following <laughs> claudia it's just kind of, she's just like you don't even know where they are yeah i don't it's walter has got to be unfortunately because i really like this actor one of the bigger sort of disappointments of the season because I thought he was really going to be the guy who's got his finger on the pulse, but he doesn't even know who his kid is dating for years. <laughs> he doesn't know what his daughter's doing. He doesn't know what anybody's doing. So if Polly is behind this, he won't know that either. Well, maybe Polly knows that he kind of sucks at this. And yes. maybe that's why Polly is like, all right, you know what? I'll do this. I mean, clearly, Walter's got other things going on now. He has, like, an official diagnosis for his lung cancer. It's early. He seems to think that he can be able to fight it all right. I guess good for you, Walter. Yeah, but it wasn't very clear if he was actually going to take the treatment or not. And, you know, I did, like, a quick Google search. I don't know a lot about, you know, lung cancer, small cell lung cancer. But stage one seems like from the internet, yeah. you know, Dr. Google, that it is something that is treatable and you can beat if he takes the treatment. Yeah, and I, Walter clearly is the sort of person who probably just thinks that he can <laughs> conquer anything and he can take anything on and he can all put it under his boot and it's going to be okay. But I, I, I think Walter will probably be eventually coerced into doing this i think people will somehow be like okay walter you know what you don't have to give up your empire right now it's, it's early on you're not going to be too weak on the other side of it but granted i also don't really want to sit around and watch walter flynn in like treatments for the next year or so because it's not that's not the most compelling television for this character no i'm at this point i'm more interested in the idea that walter goes 
And it's sort of between Claudia and Vic because Vic is able to do some stuff, but he's really been sort of held back a lot. And Claudia, who had been held back a lot, is now partnered with Tommy and running the new, you know, big drug that everybody wants their hands in. So if Walter dies, who really will end up in that spot? And now that Gloria is seemingly gone, is Vic then, is it all going to work out how Polly probably wants it, which is he's going to just, you know, be all in on the family and the family business and keep going. It is in Polly's best interest to keep the business going. It is absolutely in Polly's best interest. I... I'm just worried for Polly here that this is not going to go according to plan because I think he is assuming that on the other side of all this, Vic is going to be like, all right, I want revenge. I'm going to come in, do this. I'm going to tear everybody up limb from limb. And maybe he will do that. But maybe he's also just going to be like really in his feelings. And he's just going to be like sitting around somewhere sad, listening to like Michael Bolton songs or something. We don't know how big it's going to react to this. He could end up like Raymond Reddington, where he disappears from his own criminal empire for two years. <laughs> yeah, like th there is no guarantee Vic is going to do any of this but it's clearly that is the risk that Polly is willing to take I mean I'm sorry that Gloria died but at the same time this was obviously where this story was going Vic was not going to be able to be happy this is not a show about happiness no it's not except maybe for Liliana who's now met Tommy's brother and is like hey <laughs> Oh I my god, it was so cute. Watching her flirt, she's adorable. I don't know how to tell Liliana this about JP, but <laughs> no, I, uh, it, the two of them was really, really fun. And I think just <laughs> getting to see, I, I'm worried, obviously, that JP is a part of this organization. It's going to eventually end really badly. But, you know, this is a guy who clearly needs the money. He clearly wanted to be a part of things with Tommy. Yes, he has no experience in this particular brand of cooking, but hey, he's an eager learner, and clearly, with his voice, Liliana is a very <laughs> eager instructor, and she is ready to instruct away. Yeah, and Tommy's got pretty big aspirations for this. He wants to make sure that there are three cooks so that they're doing eight-hour shifts and they're just going to continue to pump out the product because the demand has spiked right, right away. And we've got a situation where, you know, Claudia also wants to come out from behind the shadows and do more. And Tommy's like, great, we need you to do more. Things are expanding very quickly. She wants to bring in CBI and Tommy's kind of like, Listen, there's some stuff going on with Diamond and Gennard, and they are not really seeing eye to eye. And until they do, like, I just can't really risk that because, you know, family dynamics get messy. And we know that Gennard is going behind Diamond's back already. This is where we get to the what is Claudia doing portion of the program. And I... I think what they're doing with Claudia is realistic. Like, I will throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has been in her father's shadow for the entirety of her life doesn't have a lot of experience <laughs> running things. I think she wants to be really successful, but clearly she has not read the So You're a Part of a Drug Empire manual that I thought that they distributed to people who got into this position because one of the first rules, and I even know this, and I'm not in this business at all, but it is like, you don't go to somebody else to try to negotiate a business dealing without your other partners there. Like, there's no reason for Diamond to even consider this for a second. Yeah, I was really happy to see him just call that out. He's He's been around a long time to see that this is not good, that whatever she's offering is real messy, it's behind her partner's back, it's not worth it, and there's a lot of danger that comes from someone being so reckless and she is really reckless and it's just it's kind of funny to be saying that because tommy has been reckless in the yeah. past as well and it seems like he's grown through a lot of that that while he's still willing to take some big chances he feels a lot less reckless now that it's his yeah, and I, and I think Tommy at least has the wherewithal that if he screws up, he can find a way to sort of dig himself out of the hole. And, you know, Claudia, she just doesn't have the experience. She doesn't have the knowledge. I mean, yes, she's killed now. She has sort of 
develop more of that, but Diamond, he doesn't really know her that much from anything. All he really knows about her is her tie to the Flynn family. Like, he doesn't have that much of a reason to believe her. And he's also got his own problems going on now with Adrian and that confession getting out there. Yeah, he's got that going on. He's got Jannard going behind his back. And, you know, it's just, it. things are getting really messy around Diamond. Yeah. But I feel like Diamond himself doesn't have enough to do right now. He really doesn't. And that's a shame because I really like Diamond. <laughs> like too. He's one of my favorite characters on the show. I'm sure it's going to get a little bit more complicated for him sooner rather than later, especially given <laughs> Jannard. Okay, my guy, cousin buddy, the, <laughs> uh, the, the one-eyed wonder. I relate to you as another man with one eye. Once again, only thing I relate to you, but apparently <laughs> cousin buddy... He's coming up from Gary, and uh, the new plan here is, okay, if we're not going to uh, have direct access to Dahlia, we're just going to kill people with it and take it from them instead. Yeah, it's... Things are going to get very, very, very messy, especially after Jannard has now killed one of Tommy's people. It's not good. It's... It's it's really going to get messy from here, which is kind of what we expect. We've only got a couple episodes left. Yeah, I mean, this is the time that you got to be accelerating things. And now we've got the situation where you got Mirkovich and the Serbian mob that's there. You got Cousin Buddy coming up. You got Jannard wanting his own piece. You got Walter Flynn yelling <laughs> into a void and not actually accomplishing anything. Like, all this is yeah. happening. And we have this reveal about DMAC, which we all knew already that yeah. he is JP's son. But now Tommy knows as well. That whole scene with him doing the math and standing there with Tommy and being like, listen, like, I want to find a place. I want to be able to use what I have, like this gift that I have. And Tommy's like, all right, all right. Uh, I'm all right with that. He tested him. I loved that scene. It was really one of my favorites of this. I'm really invested in DMAC and that whole story. And then we had Tommy find this box of DMAX stuff that had like a baseball in it. Yeah. I don't even really know what the connection is <laughs> with it, but I was like, oh, he's holding on to some sort of memento probably from his dad. And then the picture where Tommy's like, okay, so obviously this is, you know, my brother's son. This is my nephew. Okay. I have more information now. What he's going to do with that. I don't know. I want to see more of, I am even more invested in DMAC now that he's got like this insane like <laughs> math ability that he's got going on here. Like I was in like a number sense program in elementary school that was about a lot of doing this sort of stuff. I was nowhere near as good as DMAC is. DMAC, with his ability to like count things, this man is not going to be allowed in any casino in the country. <laughs> like that is the one thing I know from sure from watching it. But no, I... I'm so happy that we're kind of getting to know more about him. I think yeah. now that Tommy's got this information, it could change things in a pretty interesting way, though granted there's a lot of other family-related problems for Tommy now. Yeah, I was mostly just curious why DMAC decided that now's the time he wanted to work a little more closely with Tommy, knowing that Tommy is with his dad. Like, we've seen a lot of conflict inside DMAC where he's just like, he's hitting his dad's club. Now he's trying to work with Tommy. He's close to his dad. And I think it's just, I think it's a really relatable situation for a lot of people that don't know their dad or don't know their mom and just don't really know how to deal with anger and longing and grief and, and wanting answers that he's just sort of like ping-ponging all over the place. He's young, and I think when you're young and you're confused and I think you've got this like emotional void in it, you're going to do whatever you can to try to figure out how to resolve that. Yeah, and I think that that never goes away because we saw JP call Kate at the yeah. end of this episode. And, you know, he's much older than DMAC, obviously, is his dad, but he's a full on adult and he's still having questions, longing, anger, grief, you know, just not really knowing what's going on. This. This is one of those scenes where I think a lot of people in the Powerverse are understandably probably pretty mad at JP right now because we all know that Kate is the worst and that the last thing anybody should want is Kate in Chicago. But he just said, this is his mother. This is someone who we never really got any sort of closure for. He's desperate 
to get it. I'm assuming Kate's going to be in Chicago very, very soon, and I'm worried for everybody. Listen, sometimes people just need answers. I have a friend, a long friend that I've known since high school that is adopted. And after his adopted parents passed away, he was in like his 30s and was like, you know what? I think I'm going to contact my mom and see, you know, what's what. And after all that happened, he was like, I made a mistake. <laughs> it was happened. a mistake. It happened, yeah. right? But you always have this thing where you just don't know. And once you do know, at least, and you can be like, okay, that door was closed. It needs to stay closed. But at least I know. JP and his beautiful voice are going to have to find this out <laughs> for they're going to he's going to have to find this out for himself like there's yeah. nothing Tommy can do. No. But all right, we have just a couple of episodes left to go this season. Obviously, we're set up for a lot of stuff, but mm -hmm. hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss any other review we have coming up or our coverage of Killing Eve. This is us some other great shows. Follow us on Instagram at Matt and Just TV and we will see you here next time.